Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Uh, we continue with, uh, I continue with my sharing of my learnings from the Dhammapad and uh, in this uh, video I will be ca capturing verse number 221 to 240. I am using this book for my reading of the verses, the Dhammapad by Eknath Iswaran. This book is available on Amazon, it's a very good book, you can consider purchasing this book, right? Okay, so we will start. Uh, okay, one more thing is the Dhammapad, the, there is a playlist, you can access the, all the videos, there is a playlist that is available on the, my channel and all the Dhammapad videos will be available in that playlist. So you can check the Dhammapad playlist for all the Dhammapad related videos, right? Okay, so let us come uh, to a very important topic uh, in verse, from verse 221 to 231, uh, it's on anger, the theme of this is anger. So Buddha says, give up anger see anger is one thing which is like which has impacted me uh, i have been uh, i have come uh, overcome my anger uh, my short temper uh, and it's a destructive emotion right so and a lot of people are stuck in anger right so what is buddha's advice on anger so let us see buddha says give up anger give up pride and free yourself from worldly bondage no sorrow can befall those who never try to possess people and things on their own right so buddha says that buddha asks us that give up anger give up pride the arrogance and free yourself from the bondage right so buddha is not saying anywhere like you know reduce it or you know some way buddha is simply saying do not have just let go of anger right buddha also suggests certain ways but he is saying give up anger plain and simple right no sorrow can befall those who never try to possess people and things as their own. So all the qualities of possessiveness and all which generates the anger and jealousy, all these emotions, they, they, they cause sorrow. But if we let go of those tendencies, no sorrow will come. Verse 222, Buddha says, Those who hold back rising anger like ruling chariot are real charioteers. Others merely hold the reins. So this is like very profound that when anger arises in us, the people who have the capacity to hold their anger, they are the like uh, like a rolling chariot that is like you know falling from a mountain. You know those who have the capacity to hold the reins because there is so much momentum. But those who can hold the reins, they are the real charioteers. Others are just merely holding the reins, right? They are not able to control the horse. So very, very important is we need to develop our the capability of our mind, the depth that we have, our mindfulness, the energy of mindfulness in, in us so much that when through the various practices, like I have made a video on insight meditation and you can check that video and how through meditation, through insight practice, we can observe the rise and fall of these various emotions. We can gain that depth in us to be a witness to these strong emotions as they come so that next time when the emotions come either we will not be we will be able to hold ourselves back completely or we will be able to witness and be aware at the time that we are getting angry so that we can limit the impact of our anger the problem is that if you are totally unconscious when anger comes then the whole destruction happens the whole village gets you know damaged and then we then repent later on then guilt comes so so Hold back the rising anger, that quality we need to cultivate. Now verse 223 and 224 is where Buddha says certain steps, how we can control the negative, you know, overcome the negative uh, qualities. Buddha says conquer anger through, through gentleness. Be more and more. So if you have anger issues, be more and more gentle in your life. Right? Be more and more gentle. Be more and more kind. Unkindness through kindness. If you are unkind, unforgiving, practice a lot of kindness. So what basically we have to do is that these negative emotions are also there in us. Positive emotions like love and kindness are also there. Even a criminal has all the qualities of a saint. But because of his environment and his upbringing, he has not been able to nurture that. Now what Buddha is saying is that start nurturing these positive qualities. Like if you have anger problem, practice more gentleness in your conduct, in your speech. You know, start practicing. By Be aware and start practicing. Be extra gentle, extra kind. That way what you are doing is that you are, you are kind of making the seeds of gentleness 
and compassion in you strong that will ensure that when the anger comes those that energy that you have you know created in you of gentleness of compassion that will ensure that you don't go out of control right so conquer anger through gentleness unkindness through kindness greed through generosity if you have greed in you lot of greed be more generous and falsehood by truth if you are prone to speaking lies and you are aware now of that then speak more of the truth consciously be truthful do not yield to anger give freely even if you have but little even if you have little money or your financial condition is not good still try to give some right the gods will bless you the gods will bless you right this is a very very beautiful phrase uh, verse verse 2 to 3 right but now come to verse 2 to 5 and 2 to 6 buddha says injuring no one self control the wise enter the state of peace beyond all sorrow those who are vigilant who train their minds day and night and strive continually for nirvana enter the state of peace beyond all selfish passions so what i understand from this is ultimately friends if we have our goal is clear in our mind and we practice and make it clear in our mind day and night one day we will achieve that goal buddha is clearly saying that in all these verses so we have to just keep that one goal and injuring no one self control wise enters the so self control not being angry not hurting people not con- doing harming anyone through our body or through our speech we have to learn how to self control ourselves and keep our mind focused on uh, on that one thing nirvan verse 2 to 7 buddha says there is an old saying people will blame you if you say too much they will blame you if you say too little they will blame you if you if you say just enough no one in the world escapes blame so here buddha is saying about blame that see if you are living in a world see whatever you do there will be someone who will have an opinion on you who will consider you a fool or blame you for so there is like there is the saying no that everyone is a fool in someone else's opinion so so th- let that be right let that not uh you know influence your thoughts and actions right because somewhere or the other people will blame right that is their that is their their what they can do we have to focus what we have to do verse 228 229 and 230 buddha says there was never and there never was and never will be anyone who receives all praise or all blame but who can blame those who are pure wise good and meditative they shine like a coin of pure gold even the gods praise them even the brahma the creator right so buddha says that there was and never will be anyone who receives all so there will be very less very less people who receives all the praise at all times or there will be very less people who receive all the blame all the time but people who are pure wise good and meditative who can blame them they are they shine like a coin of pure gold so buddha is asking us to cultivate those qualities in us which which even gods praise them verse 231 232 233 234 very important it's on the mindfulness of body and our speech right verse use your body buddha says use your body for doing good not for not for harm so the bodily actions right so our mind we exert the action through our body so we have to be so it's mindfulness of body be mindful of of the actions of a, of of the body so be mindful that you will not hurt either physically any person living person or animal or insect right no killing no cruelty train it to follow the dharma train the body to follow the dharma use your tongue for doing good not harm not speak words so again coming back to the going back to the noble eightfold path on right speech buddha has given so much importance to speech that he had given it as one of the eight eightfold path right speaking no lies no false speech no speech that creates hatred speaking pure gentle speech speech that creates harmony train it to speak train it to speak kindly use your mind for doing good not harm train your mind in love let let train our mind that our mind remains in love at all times right we this is this is all the practice that we have to do training to our of our mind of our thoughts to be kind because once we get control over our thoughts 
and they start becoming kind and gentle automatically the actions and speech will flow out from that only the wise are disciplined in body mind speech and mind they are well controlled indeed so buddha is giving the virtue that the wise people are disciplined in body speech and mind that means by bodily actions also speech what they speak and the thoughts that they think in all these three ways they are well controlled right so this is an important verse now we come to the section of impurity verse 235 to 254 so let's continue with 235 Buddha says you are like a withered leaf waiting for the messenger of death you are about to go on a long journey but you are so unprepared this is beautiful verse you are about to go on a long journey but you are so unprepared light the lamp within strive hard to attain wisdom become pure and innocent and live in the world of light so buddha is saying that you are basically a withered leaf you have not worked on yourself so you are a withered leaf any time you can end and there is a long journey after death right and because when we die then we get born according to the realms we born in the realms according to our karma right so there is a long journey in front of us so but we are so unprepared we have not do, done our inner work we have not done our meditation we have not been right in our conduct so buddha is it's like a wake up call by the buddha light the lamp within light the lamp of knowledge within strive hard to attain the wisdom become pure and innocent and live in the world of light don't live in the world of darkness live in the world of light the light of knowledge right live in that knowledge so buddha is again exhorting us to take the path of knowledge and prepare ourselves verse 237 238 your life has come to an end and you are in the presence of death there is no place to rest in this journey and you are so unprepared light the lamp within strive hard to attain wisdom become pure and innocent and you will be free from birth and death so this is the same almost the same thing that is said in the earlier verse verse 239 240 buddha says make your mind pure as a silver smith blows away the impurities of silver little by little instant by instant as rust consumes the iron which breeds it as rust consumes the iron which breeds it evil deeds consume those who do them so buddha again says that make the mind pure so every day we have to make our effort in our meditation to purify the mind check my video on insight meditation i have made another video on mahasi sadaws insight meditation vipassana meditation practice see the videos start i have given the link to the book also start practicing vipassana meditation and pu- start purifying your mind Sil- little by little the effort counts like a silver smith is doing that way every day the small time that we spend in our meditation that clears our mind purifies our mind and then buddha gives the example of a rust that consumes so iron what it it breeds the rust and that rust one day consumes the whole so if we entertain evil desires evil things do the evil actions then one day these evil actions will consume us fully right and and once it starts consuming us then we will have no kind of respite right so think on that please reflect on these verses and do share your thoughts comments feedback your takeaways in the comment section i hope uh, some of this video was helpful to you in any way and uh, thank you so much and uh, thank you so much namo buddhaya namo buddhaya